Subscribe GA. Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Jordan is confronted by Portia. Cody is concerned. Sam interrupts and Molly requests. According to General Hospital, Jordan Ashford stays out of all the drama. The position of Curtis Ashford's wife will be thrust upon him. Sophia Matson's character, Sasha Gilmore Corbin, is taken off guard. Josh Kelly's Cody Bell seeks out Bonnie Burroughs' Gladys Corbin. Kelly Monaco interrupts Sam McCall. TJ for Molly Lansing Davis, Ashford, Taj Bellow, would sacrifice everything. Curtis is called out by Trina Robinson for lying. Jordan Ashford's General Hospital can't afford a scandal. While Laura Collins searches for Nicholas Cassidine, Jordan has recently accepted Laura's offer to serve as acting mayor. She shouldn't get involved in any drama at this moment. But will she be able to avoid it? General Hospital claim Curtis is now the victim. Now that his wife is crying, Curtis knows that he was to blame for them and understands how it feels to be found out lying. He probably ought to have told her about the kiss he shared with his ex-wife. Surprised, Sasha Gilmore Corbin. Sasha will feel a fire in her that she hasn't felt in a long time when someone level an accusation in Cody's direction. Even Sasha would be shocked by this. Where did her intense sentiments for Cody come from? And to whom is she defending him? Cody Bell is looking for Gladys Corbin, General Hospital hint. Cody believes he is getting close to having Gladys where he needs her, but he must first locate her alive and in person. Will she comply with his demand or meet him? Sam a call from GH is interrupted. Sam may be interrupted as she investigates the complicated scenario between Gladys and Cody. But by whom? Does Dante Falconeri arrive home earlier than expected? T.J. Ashford's expressions of empathy for Molly Lansing Davis. T.J. and Molly are still having a hard time adjusting to the possibility that they won't become parents. Although he has always stood by her side and been ready to assist her, T.J. may find Molly's upcoming request to be too much to ask. Trina Robinson of General Hospital puts Curtis Ashford in his place. Trina wondered what was going on with her mom and Curtis after her uncle Zeke Robinson brazenly advised her to avoid her own biological father. She will ask just as many questions as Portia did now that she is aware of what he did. What did Curtis have in mind? For Portia and Jordan, the gloves are removed. Dramatic confrontations, additional sneaky suspicions, sad information, and much more are revealed in General Hospital. This fresh, poignant episode is one you won't want to miss. Featured hospitals in general. Although Portia, Rebecca Herbst, has resolved to fight Jordan, Elizabeth, Rebecca Herbst, did not intend for Portia to fight for her marriage. When Portia storms into Jordan's office and demands to know why she kissed her husband, Jordan is unprepared. Jordan finds out quickly that Portia's brother is incapable of maintaining secrecy for longer than five minutes. It could be said that Jordan chooses the high road since she doesn't want to dispute with Portia. But Curtis's new wife doesn't exactly make things simple. Jordan must use some self-defense, but she also advises Portia that she should speak with Curtis about this rather than her. When Portia discovers Curtis, he will need to provide additional justification. Cody is adamant about saving Sasha. Cody warns Sam that Sasha is about to get hurt and then summons Gladys to let her know that her days as Sasha's guardian are indeed numbered and she may be the one going to prison. Sam might want to save Cody from the long arm of the law, but Cody only wants to save Sasha from the walking train wreck that is Gladys. Sasha is now fully behind Cody and fighting for him telling a person that they don't know who Cody Bell truly is while defending him. More unfavorable news for Molly. The news that Molly may not have enough viable eggs to collect and freeze may force Molly and TJ's plans to become pregnant through a surrogate to fail. Molly is devastated by the news and wonders if she and TJ were never meant to be parents. TJ assures Molly 
that he will be by her side no matter what she chooses. If you're falling behind on General Hospital, Soap Hub can help you catch up on all the most recent events in Port Charles. We release weekly recaps every weekend that inform you of the most significant events and assist you in understanding the current state of the program. Sasha demands Curtis confess in response to Cody's Ladies General Hospital. Lucy Co. will query Maxie Jones about the specifics of the plot. Maybe Lucy will catch up on the friction between Sasha Gilmore and Gladys Corbin, or maybe she'll notice Sasha's affections for Kobe Bell. Cody will phone Gladys in the meanwhile to request a meeting. Damien Spinelli recently worked on a special operation for Sam McCall, Kelly Monaco, which could be proof that Gladys used Cody as a scapegoat or that she is abusing her guardianship of Sasha. No matter what, Gladys will appear irritated as she answers Kobe's call and advises him to come tell her what he believes he has. Gladys seems like she'll doubt Cody's dirt, or at least make an effort to minimize it. Cody's top concern will be to spare Sasha any more suffering because she has already through a lot. Cody appears pretty serious as he tells someone that Sasha is about to get wounded in Wednesday's GH preview clip. We'll have to wait and see if Cody is speaking to Sam to strategize, or if it's a new request for help from Gladys. In either case, it appears that Sasha will be caught off guard and eventually get into another dispute with Gladys. You are completely ignorant of Kobe Bell. In the Wednesday promo trailer, Sasha snaps. Sasha will go out in Cody's defense despite any new allegations that are leveled against him. The ultrasound findings from Molly Lansing Davis, currently portrayed by Holiday Nia Kriegel, reveal that she doesn't have many viable eggs and so is probably not going to be able to have a biological kid. Molly will ask TJ Ashford, Taj Bello, if they can put the family concept on hold for the time being because she will be struggling with yet another set of unpleasant news. TJ will assert that he would do anything for Molly, yet he will appear upset about abandoning their plans to start a family. Then, Curtis Ashford will try to keep Trina Robinson in the dark about his most recent dispute with Jordan Ashford. But Trina will react angrily since there has already been too much lying in this family. Considering that Curtis will give a difficult explanation on Wednesday's episode, it appears that he will admit to kissing Jordan and try to explain the situation to Trina. Portia Robinson will question Jordan in her office and demand to know why she kissed her husband. Jordan will attempt to maintain her composure and perhaps even concede that it wasn't her best moment. According to General Hospital, Jordan will update Portia on her account of the events, but Portia will still be angry at Curtis' betrayal. After discovering the truth, Portia leaves Curtis, and Ned's family is hurt by his behavior. While inspecting Sonny's home, Ava calls Austin and tells him that it is evident that Sonny doesn't leave crucial paperwork laying about. Austin cautions her against taking chances and getting caught because his home office is locked. When Ava hears Pilar enter, she settles down on the couch and picks up a magazine. With the girls waiting, Ava says, but now that she's here, she can leave. Pilar sees the drawer has been slightly opened after Ava has left. Austin sees Laura at the hospital and reaches out to help her stay upright when she starts to feel lightheaded and shaky. He sets her down and gets her some water after suggesting that they locate a quiet area. She tells that she had blood work done and that she always feels a little lightheaded afterward. The blood work was done in preparation for her forthcoming trip to Chechnya. Austin says it's a hazardous area. Laura says that she needs to bring her son back since he might be there. She queries why not when Austin abruptly states, You can't do that. You can't go. He warns that the hospitals there might not be reputable and that if she requires medical attention, she won't be able to communicate in the local tongue. Additionally, he claims that it is extremely risky and, as one of her constituents, he is worried about her. She expresses gratitude for his care but refuses to change her opinion. After feeling better, she leaves. Ava sends Austin a text, and the two of them later meet in his office. Austin claims he met Laura and tried to persuade her not to travel to the conflict area, but he doesn't believe it was successful. He observes that Ava left Sonny's without incident. 
Alice says the nanny entered the room while she was hiding. But there is no way for her to enter Sunny's office. Austin argues that there might be another way in and that it might be time to fire Pilar and get a new, more helpful nanny. Austin advises Pilar to get Sunny to fire her because Ava claims Pilar won't resign. Avery loves Ava, hence she is unable to do that. Austin queries Avery on whether she loves Pilar more than her mother and on whom she will turn if Cousin Mason murders her. Inquiring Nina? Carly. Ava says, Sunny asks All right, Nina Pilar's where her out. ring is in the hallway. She mumbles that she is attempting to explain, but once he understands, he cannot be made to forget it. Dante and Leo interrupt the conversation. Sonny talks to Leo while he spins a fidget toy and remarks that he hasn't seen one of them in a while. When Leo brings up Ned's accident, Sonny assures him that his father is resilient and will recover. Ned asserts his name is Eddie Main in his chamber. Brooke Lynn wonders whether her dad doesn't recognize any of them, and Olivia queries whether this is a joke. TJ informs Ned that he's bewildered after his head injury and asks the women to wait in the hallway while he examines him. He angrily declares he's not Brooke Lynn's father, and when Tracy attempts to explain that he injured his head and is confused, he responds, I don't know what you are talking about, lady. And don't come back, shouts Ned. Olivia, who is standing outside Ned's chamber, finds it difficult to convey this to Leo. Brooke Lynn advises that it's ideal if Leo doesn't perceive him in this way. While searching for Dante and Leo, Brooke Lynn asks Tracy to stay with Olivia. She also asks her grandmother to be supportive of Olivia rather than being her normal snappy self. Olivia fears that Brooke Lynn's departure will be like Jason and Ned never returning to them. Dante, Leo, Sonny, and Nina are all found by Brooke Lynn. When Dant asks Leo if he wants to see his father, Brooke Lynn replies that they are unsure because he is a little disoriented and being examined by the doctors. Leo will visit his mother, per Dante's decision. Brooke Lynn sobs to Sonny, saying that her father misidentifies him as Eddie Main and doesn't know who he is. He doesn't recall any of his family, according to her. She departs in order to return. Given what the quarter mains are experiencing, Nana claims that her troubles don't seem that severe. Sunny queries Nana as to what it was she hurriedly told him earlier. When Nana took her ring off and dropped it into the sink, she claims she was experimenting with a new clay mask for crimson. A plumber, according to Sunny, can remedy that. She had him fearing the worst and he felt she was going to tell him something dreadful. Nana claims that it is an expensive ring that she adores. He refers to it as jewelry and she is the only thing that matters to him. He envelops her. Tracy and Brooklyn are joined by Dante and Leo. TJ leaves Ned's room and adds that, except from his cognitive issues, Ned seems healthy and normal on all other counts. He acts irrationally and aggressively. When Brooklyn reunites with her family, they introduce Eddie Main to TJ. TJ claims that Ned has a traumatic brain injury and that he needs to identify the specific area of the brain that is injured because the brain is a complicated structure. They should prepare themselves for a lengthy recuperation period, though. Everyone discovers Leo is absent all of a sudden. Leo sneaks in to see Ned and inquires about his father's well-being. Leo explains that Julian is his birth father, but that he was adopted, to Ned's response of, I don't mean to be rude, kid, but I'm no one's dad. Leo was abruptly informed by Brooke Lynn that his father wasn't feeling well. For the last time, I'm not your dad or his, Ned screams. Leo departs. Leo was with dad as he ran off, and Olivia has been warned by Brooke Lynn as she leaves. In case TG has additional information, Tracy says she'll go look for him and that they should remain. Tracy finds Leo and makes the decision to be open with him. She queries his knowledge of her. Tracy prefers to be direct, and Leo responds, you're mean. She explains that because his father suffered a severe brain injury, he is disoriented and cannot recall them. She acknowledges it hurts her feelings and that she is aware it also hurts his. He is aware of their identities, nevertheless, 
and Ned will always be his father. When will Olivia get her spouse back? Olivia queries TJ. TJ wishes he could respond to her, but he is unable to. He promises to make additional specialized calls and choose a line of action. Olivia is still concerned, but Dunk advises his mother to wait for the doctors and to be patient. He envelops her. Jordan worried about Zeke telling Portia the truth at her PCP desk. Her call to Curtis Jordan is answered a request voice. from Laura later on. For Laura, Jordan will stop at nothing. Jordan queries whether Laura has done anything wrong when she says, I need your resignation. Jordan will have to locate Laura's replacement because Laura says she needs her to fill the position of deputy mayor. Jordan must decline her request since she doesn't think she is qualified for the position. She is a police officer, not a politician, Jordan explains. The towns and political systems are understood by Laura, who claims to have the highest level of confidence in both. Jordan is asked by Laura if she isn't ready for a new challenge because the PCPD has reached its maximum level. Jordan responds, I accept in that case. Trina asks Curtis if he had a good birthday in the Metro court pool. He claims that it exceeded all of his expectations. Her mother is madly in love with him, so she is happy he has moved back in. Despite her sins, she still wants her mother to be content. Curtis' phone rings. But since it is on quiet, he cannot see who is calling because it is Jordan. Trinette is curious about her mother's whereabouts because she wants to consult her about an art fellowship she's considering applying for. Curtis suggests they follow her as she was on her way to the eatery. Zeke mentions Curtis' actions to Portia in the restaurant, and she inquires as to what he is referring to. She insists they don't keep things a secret and demands to know what is happening. She won't like this, says Zeke. He reveals to Portia that Curtis kissed his ex-wife, Jordan, in response to her inquiry. Zeke responds that Jordan told him yesterday when she inquires about how he knows. He claims he made a pledge to keep quiet, but he acknowledges they spent the night together. Despite their kiss, he claims Jordan maintained she was still in love with her ex. Zeke apologizes, but he felt compelled to inform her. When Trina and Curtis arrive, Trina says she needs to speak with her mother about next fall. While Curtis and Portia are having a conversation, Zeke interrupts and pulls her aside, saying he wants to hang out with his niece. They ascend to the swimming pool. Did you kiss Jordan? Cordian directs Curtis' question to the point. He acknowledges that he did, and it took place a few weeks ago. He claims that it occurred because he ran into Jordan while bewildered. He claims Jordan helped him come to the realization that he wanted to try again with Portia as his wife. Portia wonders if he was ever going to tell her the truth in layman's. I should send her a thank you card. Curtis does not speak. Given all his talk about being honest, Portia finds it hard to think he would intend to keep anything from her. Curtis claims that she cannot contrast this with her 20-year lie. She is unable to comprehend what took transpired. He explains that Jordan had been a disaster and that he had been spending time with Jordan. She is shocked to learn that he was confiding in Jordan, but he claims that it was just due of their shared past. Although Portia is aware that Jordan has had affections for him, she didn't anticipate that he would also have feelings for her. Jordan, he claims, is part of his past, and he longs to be with her. She sobs because she wants to believe him, but is unable to be present at this time. She leaves while sobbing. Trina assumes something is going on between her mother and Curtis because her mother seems upset as Zeke and she went to the pool. She questions what Zeke is withholding from her. Zeke is happy to see how guarded she still is about her mother because it gives him hope that their relationship will endure. Trina claims that even though her mother has let her down, she still loves her and will stand by her side no matter what. Zeke suggests that she remain on the sidelines for the time being. Trina queries, who? In response, he says, from Curtis. On the upcoming episode of General Hospital, Liz counsels Portia. With Nina, Ava is the voice of reason. Sam is told by Drew why this is the greatest option. TJ confides in Alexis. Carly informs Sunny that the SEC's problems will soon be resolved. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, 
So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.